Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm going to go through and show you this 18650 battery charger. Now, what I've got set up here is my desktop power supply where I have a bunch of voltages that I can run down through into the battery charger and I've also got a volt and amp meter. So let's go. All right, so the circuit that I'm using is a TP4056. Now, that's a quite common cheap eBay charger that you can buy. And what I'm going to do is start by attaching with some hot glue my desktop power supply and also my volt and amp meter. Now, these are only set up temporarily while I test this battery charger. Once I've finished, I'll probably pull it all apart and actually set up more of a charging station. But the circuit itself, now, what it has is two terminals on one end, which are for the battery holder to charge the actual battery. And all you have to do is solder those two connections on. Now it does say BAT positive and BAT negative. What I'm doing is running it up through this volt and amp meter, and then the wires from there, I'm going to run down into the actual battery charger. So as you can see, I've soldered those connections there onto the actual charger. Then we can go from the other side, which goes up to the power supply. Now you can also use the USB port as well. I'm using the cables in this scenario. So what we end up having here, power supply going five volts in to the digital volt and amp meter, which then goes down to the battery charger, which then goes to the amp and volt meter, which is an analog, and then into that battery holder. So that's the basic setup. And when I turn the power on, you'll see that the LEDs on that circuit are actually both on. Now I go through the LEDs later on, but you can see that the voltmeter is showing about four volts and the amp meter is showing zero amps because it is not charging anything. There is no battery plugged into that battery holder. Now, when I plug the battery in, but have the charger turned off, we can still see that there's about four volts there. And that's because that battery actually has a charge still in it and the voltage sits around that four volts. So now when I turn the actual charger on, you can see the voltage level then jumps up to around that 4.4 or something around there. Now, what I wanna do is put this charger through a full test. So first off, I'm going to have to discharge the battery and I've got this Opus battery charger and discharger, which I'm going to do a full discharge and once the battery is down to its lowest voltage level with no charge in it, I'll then plug it into our new charger that we've put together. And then all I have to do is wait until it's ready. And in this case, I only had to discharge the battery for about an hour and a half because of the battery only retaining so much charge in it. So now we can go back to our test setup and what you can see there is the voltage coming in is 5.2 volts and on the actual analog meter you can see around 4 volts because it's got a charging voltage graph which I'll show you in a minute but what we're going to do next is plug the battery in and as you can see with the battery plugged in it's just over that 3 volt mark which lines up to where it should be if it's fully discharged. So when I turn the actual whole charging setup on, you can see it just jumps up that voltage a little bit because it needs to have a higher voltage to actually get that charge into the actual battery. So what you'll see is there'll be the current that's currently sitting around 1.27 will go less and less the more that the battery charges. Now, that's because the battery over time it actually takes a lot more charge at the start of the charging process. And then as it gets more full or the battery has a higher percentage of charge in it, the current actually starts to drop off, which you can actually see on both the digital and the analog AR meters. Now, the time it takes is dependent on how much current the charge is actually pushing in. Now, these units can be modified to have different levels of charge if you wanted to charge it quicker or slower, depending on your actual setup. Now, as you can see there, the current on that analog meter is starting to really die off and it's that's because 
it's harder to actually charge batteries as they're getting more and more full in these lithium ions so one of the best explanations i've heard or simplest explanation for this is like trying to fit 10 people into one car the first five people can get in really quick and easy after that it takes a bit more effort to actually get each person in so same concept applies here with the batteries now as i'm charging this i'll just run through some of the technical components uh, of this charger so as you can see here there's the light indicators of the different options that you have uh, we also have the circuit diagram for the chip itself and off pin 2 what you can see is the resistor program which on this chart here you can see you can change that resistor and it changes what current is actually uh, cha charging the battery which if you want to charge it quicker or slower depending on what you need to do there's the different values there now the last one being the charge cycle now as you can see here over time and the voltage levels it determines how much uh, current it's actually charging the battery with so as you can see it pushes the charge in a lot quicker at the start with more current and then as it gets closer to the voltage level that it needs to sit at it actually starts to die off the charge it starts to taper off until it gets to a point where it will actually stop itself now as you can see here the battery has no longer uh, being charged with any current and you can see that the LEDs lit up to show that it's no longer actually charging anymore now finally i just want to go through and show you a thermal imagery of the actual charger and the battery itself for this setup i actually recorded a little bit of it now the temperature remained consistent across the entire charging time so as you can see the battery only got warm where that spring was so nothing on the battery itself actually heated up which was good and the charging unit itself got up to around that 45 degrees and yeah that was basically how i set up this charger to do this test now in future i'm probably going to expand the board out to be more of a charging station for multiple batteries so make sure you like and subscribe so you can stay in touch with those projects now that's about it from me thanks for watching and we'll see you next time